In 2092, the Earth's forests have been wiped out, making the Earth even more dying. A large corporation called UTS creates a new home for humans above Earth's atmosphere. However, only a select few can enter it. Inside the UTS company's search team building, a man named Teho carries a bag of rice. Having no money, Teho is eager to see the space search team's latest discovery. The guards on duty initially tried to shoo away Teho, who kept begging to get in. Fuck off, Teho. <laughs> it's fine. However, out of pity, they finally allow Teho to enter on one condition. Teho must hand over his boots. Eager to get in, Teho is forced to give up the only shoes he has. Space shuttle crashed five days ago in the Kabuchi Desert. Inside the building, Teho sees the dead body of a girl who was found in space due to a space station accident. Upon further inspection, it turns out that the corpse is not the person Teho is looking for. This makes Teho feel very sad. Teho then goes to the transit point to go into space. He boarded a giant ring-shaped vehicle that shot quickly into Earth's atmosphere. Above the atmosphere, they arrive at the UTS space station. As air pollution on Earth is getting worse, many rich people choose to live in space stations outside of Earth's atmosphere. There are many human colony stations built by UTS. The largest is a floating settlement with green forests, rivers, mountains, and a city center. This UTS settlement is very well equipped. Inside one of the buildings in the floating settlement, journalists met the founder of UTS, the richest and oldest man in the world. This genius named Sullivan is 152 years old. I'm only kidding. Please, please. There, Sullivan explains that he is perfecting a new colony project on Mars using extraordinary technology. In three days, Sullivan will announce the opening of the new colony on the Red Planet. One of the reporters protested that what Sullivan had created could only be enjoyed by a few rich people, while 95% of the human population was still living in misery on Earth. There is a humanitarian crisis right now. Sullivan then explained that he and his company would soon solve this humanitarian crisis. In outer space, a junkyard airplane was hovering at high speed. Several other craft gave chase and managed to capture it. These pursuers are space scavengers looking for sustenance. As the scavengers relaxed with the junkyard plane they had caught, a Korean-flagged victory suddenly appeared from behind. The scavengers panicked. Sure enough, Captain Jang, the captain of the victory, ordered his robot, Bubs, to throw an anchor to the junkyard plane. After successfully hooking the anchor, Victory's craft forcefully pulled the junker away and fled. The other space scavengers were very upset with Captain Jang's greedy behavior and unwillingness to share the bounty with them. Inside the Victory, Tiger Park tuned the engine to increase its power. The pilot steered Victory through the gaps in the space station without being touched. They escaped the pursuit of the other space scavengers. As it turned out, the pilot of the incredible Victory airplane was Teho. However, caught off guard, Victory almost crashed into the UTS settlement and hit an antenna belonging to the UTS company. <laughs> Moments later, Victory entered a waste treatment satellite factory. They were depositing the waste they had collected earlier. They also wanted to deposit their newly acquired junkyard aircraft. However, the officer named Karam explained, if you want to take this waste, you have to dismantle it first. Otherwise, the dismantling fee is very expensive. Teho then asks for the money for the waste they just got. However, they were caught crashing into an antenna belonging to the UTS company. As a result, Victory's plane was fined much more than the waste money they got. Instead of profit, Teho got a debt letter. He was upset. Instead, Teho asks for a drink in Karam's refrigerator. Moments later, P-51 
Pierre arrives. He's a big fan of Captain Jang. Pierre turns on the television and sees a news story about the disappearance of a robot named Dorothy. The robot was made by the UTS company and was very dangerous. It could explode. Dorothy was stolen by the Black Fox terrorist group two days ago. After that, Teho leaves. Outside, he scavenges through the trash and finds a pair of very ugly used shoes. He has to wear them instead of no shoes at all. Inside the victory, Captain Jang, Teho, Tiger, and Bubs played cards many times. Bubs always wins the game and pisses everyone off so much that they start fighting. Meanwhile, Bubs secretly kept the money he earned in a box. The next day, they tried to dismantle the junkyard airplane they got earlier. They were careful because the junkyard plane was damaged after passing through a zone containing billions of super-strong, iron-eating nanobots. Unexpectedly, while trying to disassemble it, the airplane's engine turns on. Teho then examines the airplane's rescue capsule. Inside, he sees something surprising, the figure of a child. They then brought the child into victory. They were confused about the girl's origins. Unintentionally, Teho sees a monitor screen about the missing Dorothy. The girl in the news was very similar to the child they had just found. In the news, Dorothy is described as very dangerous and can explode anytime anywhere. At the same time, the girl was about to sneeze. Everyone panicked. <laughs> They all ran into their respective rooms to take cover. Panic, Tiger Park tried to call the police. They then agreed to have Teho tie the child up. However, instead of tying him up, the frightened Teho took the child's suitcase and bag into his room. From inside the bag, he saw a cell phone and a file with the owner named Kong Hyun Woo. Kong Hyun Woo was also seen trying to call the cell phone belonging to the little boy many times. Seeing that, Teho then had an idea. The four of them stopped by the UTS non-resident residential district and left Dorothy in the plane there. Dorothy saw a dead tree. Dorothy then walked over to it. Magically, small glowing objects brought the tree back to life. Inside the room, Tiger Park explained that he had tried to report this incident to the police, but there was no response. Teho then had the idea to sell Dorothy to the Black Fox terrorist group since they must be looking for Dorothy right now. Teho thought that if they handed Dorothy over to the police, they wouldn't get anything in return. Using his tools, Teho tries to connect Dorothy's cell phone to contact Kong Hyun Woo, someone he believes to be a member of the Black Fox terrorist group. Unexpectedly, his call is answered. Without further ado, Kong Hyun Woo immediately promised $2 million if Teho and Tiger Park handed over Dorothy to him. Teho and Tiger Park then planned a meeting with Kong Hyun Woo at a floating club that afternoon. They were very happy because they were going to get a lot of money. <laughs> However, it turned out that their conversation had been intercepted by Sullivan, the founder of UTS. Sullivan then ordered his men to reclaim Dorothy. Inside the plane, they were getting ready to leave with Dorothy. However, suddenly a police officer came to Victory's plane and wanted to check it out because he had gotten a report earlier. They panicked when the policeman entered. They acted as if nothing had happened, but the policeman suspected something. He checked the room where Dorothy was. Lost in thought, Teho grabs some money and tries to bribe the cop. Captain Jan then arrives and declares that he has recorded the incident. He threatened to report the police officer's abuse and extortion. Upset at being threatened, the policemen left. They immediately went to the floating club. Inside, the atmosphere was very crowded and the music sounded very loud. As agreed, Kong Hyun Woo came alone. Teho then took Kong Hyun Woo to the place where Dorothy was. Meanwhile, upstairs, several guards had been eyeing their movements. As Kong Hyun Woo handed over the promised money, he immediately opened the bag that was supposed to contain Dorothy. However, it turned out to be empty. Dorothy was not in it. They were confused and started looking. As it turned out, Dorothy was walking around alone on the dance floor. Several people then looked at Dorothy. They recognized her as a dangerous robot that could explode at any moment. Everyone panicked. Eyes on the DJ. Tiger Park and Teho took Dorothy with them. However, suddenly from above, the guards fired at Tiger and Teho who were carrying Dorothy. Surprisingly, the bullets were repelled by Dorothy's special ability. 
The guards all came down and attacked, but they couldn't get their quarry inside the victory plane. Everyone was upset at Tiger for not taking good care of Dorothy, allowing her to get out of the bag. An annoyed Captain Jang stomps on Dorothy's cell phone and throws it away because he thinks it was tapped, which is why the guards were able to attack them at the floating club earlier. Captain Jang mentions that he has Kong Hyun Woo's number and will contact him again in another way. While they were drawing and talking, Tiger was amused by Dorothy's cute behavior. The captain was then puzzled after seeing a tomato plant that miraculously grew inside the airplane. On waves have the ability to diffuse nanobots. Elsewhere, Sullivan held a meeting with his team. They were discussing preparations to establish a colony on planet Mars. The plan was to use nanobots that had been altered using Krypton waves. These nanobots are very special because they can help plants grow in very extreme places. Sullivan was eager to make an advertisement stating that this technology could only be used on Mars. However, one of his team members had a different idea. He proposed that this technology should also be developed for Earth. Unfortunately, Sullivan disagreed. Perfect. He insisted that this technology was only for Mars. The goal is to create new life on the Red Planet alone. He didn't want to give false hope to humans on Earth. Above the Earth's atmosphere, as Victory's airship was damaged, they enlisted Pierre's help to tow it to the maintenance yard. During the trip, Pierre sings a love song to Captain Jang. Captain Jang, who heard him, was annoyed at Pierre's behavior of liking him. Inside the infirmary, they began to repair Victory. From a distance, Dorothy saw a refreshment vendor. She then had an idea. Dorothy borrows a pair of scissors from Teho. Teho, curious, accompanies Dorothy to a tomato tree that has produced a lot of fruit. He was shocked to see that many tomatoes. They both took the tomatoes to the factory and offered them to everyone there. The people were curious to eat organic fruit because they had only eaten synthetic food. As a result, the tomatoes sold a lot. They both earned a few dollars from the sales. <laughs> Okay, I said red. Okay. In a room, Dorothy was talking to Bubs. Bubs told her that he really wanted to have human-like skin, but it was very expensive. Bubs could not afford it. Dorothy then asks about Teho's origins. Bubs then tells her that Teho used to be a good pilot in the guards. One day, he was tasked with stopping an illegal airplane. Inside, he found a baby. During the raid, according to the rules, Teho was supposed to bring the baby back to Earth, but he didn't. Instead, he took care of the baby himself in his home. Instead, he took care of it himself in his house. He named the baby Sue and I. Sue and I had hearing damage due to the effects of hearing gunfire as a baby. Teho, who grew fond of Sue and I, promised to do whatever it took for her happiness. From then on, Teho's fighting skills declined. As a result, he was fired from the force and expelled from the colony. Teho was forced to live on the streets of UTS's non-resident neighborhoods. Gradually, his finances dwindled. Depressed, he began to engage in gambling and neglected Su and I, his daughter. One day, while Su and I was searching for food alone, a terrible accident occurred. Space junk crashes into the place where they live. Teho survived, but several people, including Su and I, were sucked into space. Full of regret, Teho tried to find his daughter's body by asking for help from a search team. Unfortunately, it's very expensive and Teho can't afford it. He only has three years before Su and I's body is lost forever in the vastness of space. As he's telling his story, Bubs notices their communication device reacting. It turns out to be a call from Kong Hyun Woo. They then planned to meet again in the evening. On the other hand, Tiger, who felt sorry for Dorothy, did not want to give her to the Black Fox group. Teho explains that right now what he needs is money to find his daughter. If it's too late, Sue and I will disappear forever in space. Elsewhere, Captain Jang examines Kong Hyun Woo's file. He then notices something suspicious. Meanwhile, Dorothy goes to the restroom, but someone follows her and kidnaps her. Since Dorothy didn't return for a long time, Tiger and the others looked for Dorothy from a distance, 
Tiger finally saw Dorothy being carried away by someone. <laughs> Teho managed to get Dorothy back, but he was then surrounded by several people. Tiger came and beat up the men. Apparently, the men didn't want to fight. One of the men removed his mask and it turned out to be Karam. They entered a room. There, Karam and his group confessed that they were the Black Fox group. At that moment, Captain Jang realized that Dorothy was not a robot, but a human. Karam then explains that the Black Fox group is not a terrorist group, but an environmentalist group. Their leader, Kong Hyun Woo, is a scientist who created a nanobot. These nanobots have the amazing ability to grow plants in the most extreme places. Initially, they worked for Sullivan and succeeded in creating new life on Mars. However, Sullivan saw their group as a threat if their research to regreen the Earth was disseminated. Because of this, Sullivan spread fake news to the mass media, making the Black Fox group look like a terrorist group. Dorothy is Kong Hyun Woo's only daughter. Since birth, she had suffered from a rare disease that made her barely able to survive. To save his daughter's life, Kong Hyun Woo injects a specially programmed nanobot. Miraculously, Dorothy recovered and even gained special abilities. She can control the nanobots around her to do various things, such as helping plants grow back. All the media broadcast Sullivan's big lie. He said that Earth had no hope, when in fact it could still be saved. Today, Mars is even greening up. However, Sullivan has a sinister plan. He wants to erase all research data on nanobots, including Dorothy and all members of the Black Fox group. Luckily, Dorothy is protected by a nanobot that makes her very hard to kill. She managed to escape. Nanobots can only be destroyed by Kryptonian waves contained in a hydrogen bomb. Captain Jang found a hydrogen bomb in the center of the sewage treatment plant. Sullivan must have planned to detonate Dorothy along with the bomb inside the plant. If his evil plan succeeds, the plant will crash and hit Earth. As a result, three billion innocent humans would perish. Unexpectedly, dozens of guards had entered the factory and searched every room. They then planned to escape and meet up with Kong Hyun Woo, Dorothy's father. They all split up. Taeho takes Dorothy to escape through the ventilation ducts, but his actions are discovered by the guards. The troops attack them outside. Dozens of shots are fired at Victory's plane. Taeho runs while carrying Dorothy and then jumps. Bubs managed to catch him, but an officer managed to pull Dorothy and make her fall. Fortunately, Tiger managed to save Dorothy. They finally make it back to Victory's plane and escape the scene. Outside, a missile exploded and hit the Victory, causing it to enter the space junk zone. Inside the zone, there are billions of powerful nanobots that eat iron. The Victory is slowly being damaged by the nanobot attack, and the hope of survival is dwindling. However, Dorothy suddenly opened her eyes and her powers drove the nanobots away. They survived, but Dorothy fainted. Everyone panicked, but before long, Dorothy regained consciousness and everyone was relieved. The incident made them considered dangerous terrorists. Later that night, they planned a meeting with Kong Hyun Woo. Tiger felt the meeting was dangerous and wanted to protect Dorothy, but Taeho insisted on meeting Kong Hyun Woo because he needed the ransom money. Taeho then meets with Dorothy in another room. Dorothy shows Taeho the results of her drawing. Outside, Tiger calls Dorothy because he wants to help her wash her hair before meeting his father. However, Taeho thinks Tiger's actions are wrong and the two of them fight. Fortunately, Captain Jang arrives. As a woman, she would help Dorothy wash her hair. They arrive at the promised place. As it turns out, it's the place where Taeho lost his daughter in the first place, so they enter through a crack in the damaged building. Dorothy is excited to see her father. The two planes merged, and the members of the Black Fox group, including Kong Hyun Woo, entered the victory plane. Finally, he could reunite with his daughter. Appa! Dorothy was very happy to be reunited with her father. She told him that the members of the victory plane had taken good care of her all this time. Her father was happy to hear it. However, behind the window, Captain Jang saw something strange out there. Sure enough, the electromagnetic mines around them exploded and shut down all the electronic equipment, including bubs. Moments later, dozens of guards entered the plane and opened fire on all the members of the Black Fox group that were there. 
The troops kidnapped Dorothy. Unexpectedly, Kong Hyun Woo was also shot dead by the guards. However, the guards allowed the victory crew to live. Sullivan then entered. He insulted Taeho, who was now living like trash. He then puts four million dollars in front of them. Taeho, who saw the pile of money, couldn't help himself. He chooses to take the money rather than fight back. Sullivan laughs out loud at Taeho's behavior, who would rather mind his own business than save Dorothy's life. He let the factory fall and destroy the earth, killing billions of innocent humans. After that, Sullivan left. He gave orders to his men to let the crew of the Victory live. However, he would only kill them all after the crew had seen the destruction of Earth with their own eyes. In his place, Sullivan then made an announcement to all UTS colony residents. Because soon they will move to Mars, which is currently a green planet and can accommodate life. On board the Victory, Teho took some of his share of the money, but Tiger insisted that he didn't want to touch it. I want to go save Dorothy, Tiger insisted. Teho then warned, Tiger, that mission is a suicide mission. However, Tiger replied, I don't care, even if I have to risk my life. Captain Jang then told Teho to leave. You have completed setting up hydrogen bomb timer. Location. <laughs> Elsewhere, the guards tie up Dorothy and activate the hydrogen bomb. Teho enters the search team building. He hands over the required money and makes the search team start tracking Sue and I's whereabouts. In the waiting room, he opens a box containing his daughter's mementos. Inside a book, he saw Sue and I writing, Dad, I love you very much. One day, I want to be a good person like you. Instantly, Teho remembers his past with Sue and I. In that last moment, he regretted not caring about his daughter while he was gambling. His tears flowed freely. <laughs> Teho suddenly changed his mind. He re-entered the victory plane, threw away the rest of his money, and resolved to help his friends reclaim Dorothy from Sullivan. They geared up and began to take off. Behind them, the guards gave chase. The hunt begins. Bubs, nimbly, jumped from plane to plane, destroying them one by one with his spear. After feeling safe enough, Bubs returned to victory. However, up ahead, they see several guard planes firing missiles at them. Teho immediately flew the victory diving towards the earth, avoiding the pursuing missiles behind. As the plane began to burn due to friction with the atmosphere, Teho pulled the plane up again. The heat from the friction caused the missiles to explode. Teho then flies the plane into the factory, to where Dorothy is being held. At the center of the factory, they find a hydrogen bomb ready to explode. They immediately break in and rescue Dorothy. Captain Zhang realized that the bomb's explosion would release a wave of Krypton 5,000 kilometers away. Although they managed to survive, Dorothy who was hit by the Krypton wave would lose the nanobot in her body. Dorothy will become seriously ill again and the mission to save Earth will fail. The factory will fall and crash into the Earth. Teho suddenly has an idea. However, before he can execute it, a guard soldier comes and kicks Teho. Captain Jang, Bubs, and Tiger try to fight back by locking the door. Fought the soldier alone, but was no match for him. Tiger was badly beaten and passed out from being strangled. Unexpectedly, he regained consciousness and managed to open the exit door. They were both sucked out. Tiger cut off the arm of the soldier holding the door handle and managed to defeat his opponent. Outside, they detected dozens of enemy aircraft attacking. Captain Jang immediately contacted Pierre and the rest of the space scavengers. He manages to explain that Sullivan plans to bring down the factory and destroy Earth. Captain Jang asked for their help to stop the evil plan. Victory shot out of the factory. At the front, Pierre comes to help, while at the back, dozens of enemy planes pursue them. Captain Jang shoots the enemy from behind, while Teho controls the plane to get out of the factory. Outside, they are surprised to see dozens of space scavenger troops waiting and ready to help them fight the guards. A big battle is inevitable. With what they had, they tried to help Victory escape the guards. Get it!
On the television news, Captain Jang surprisingly broadcasts a recording of Sullivan's conversation stating his intention to destroy Earth by dropping his factory on our planet. Everyone was shocked. Those who had thought of Sullivan as a hero to save humanity turned out to have an evil plan to end the world. Elsewhere, Teho leads Victory's plane away from the explosion danger zone. Unexpectedly, Sullivan appears alone at the controls of his plane, pursuing them with vigor. Captain Jang tries to shoot Sullivan, but his bullets run out. Sullivan's plane managed to stick to Victory's. Outside the plane, Captain Jang tried his best to hold on. Unfortunately, Bub's body was crushed by Sullivan's plane. With his remaining strength, Captain Jang activated the auxiliary thrusters. The Victory's plane sped away. Meanwhile, outside the plane, Sullivan tried to find Dorothy. However, what he finds is not Dorothy, but a hydrogen bomb. Apparently, Teho and the others had brought the hydrogen bomb and left Dorothy with Pierre before leaving the factory. After passing through a radius of 5,000 kilometers, the bomb exploded violently. The explosion was visible from afar, but the factory did not fall and Earth was saved. As it turned out, Dorothy had used her abilities to summon iron-eating nanobots that were extremely powerful and unaffected by the Krypton wave. The nanobots managed to protect Victory's airship. Teho, Tiger, Captain Jang, and Bubs also survived the explosion. Long story short, UTS apologized for what had happened and promised to use nanobot technology to restore Earth to its original state with Dorothy's help. Bubs now has a beautiful human body. The search team asks for help from the nanobot in Dorothy's body to detect the location of Sue and I's whereabouts. Synchronization was carried out in front of them. Teho managed to see Sue and I's figure somewhere in space. He then goes into the subconscious and meets Sue and I. Teho hugs Sue and I for the last time, apologizes, and thanks her for still wanting to see him. Sue and I also said a final goodbye to her father. <laughs> the crew of the Victory then continued their lives as space scavengers. Earth was green and lush again. As always, Victory's ship always manages to retrieve the junk that other space scavengers are chasing.